Okay, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about our type one and type two errors. So let's just do a quick review of what a type one error would be, and then we're gonna dive into type two. Okay, so type one error, remember this is alpha. If we draw it real quick, this is what it's going to look like. So we have some distribution and we're going to say that this was our hypothesized mean, but the hypothesized mean we're gonna say is actually correct. So this hypothesized mean is actually equal to the true mean. All right, so the hypothesized, or the null hypothesis is in fact correct. And we're doing some hypothesis test, and this one we'll say to be greater than. Okay, so we, let's do an alpha of 0.05, just because it's common. And we'll have that be, yeah, alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay, so we're gonna come in and we do a random sample. It's a good sample, it's big enough. It's actually representative of our population. And we get some value here that gives us a p-value of equal to 0 0.03. Okay, the data that we got, the p-value says, okay, this is the probability that we would see a result this rare or rarer if the null hypothesis is in fact true. Now we said that we're willing to reject the null hypothesis and be wrong 5% of the time. And so we said, okay, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. But remember, in this scenario, the null hypothesis is actually true. So a type one error would be when the null hypothesis is actually true and we reject the null hypothesis. We just got a kind of a less common or a rare sample, but the null hypothesis is in fact true. So that would be our type one error. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit then about our type two. And this one is much more um, in depth and I will try to present it as clearly as I possibly can. All right, so let's assume again, so this is going to be type two, type two error, and remember this is called beta. All right, let's get out our original distribution. So our hypothesis is going to be that the true mean is right there. And we're still going to go along this idea of rejecting at alpha equals 0.05. Okay, so this is our alpha. We'll say alpha equals 0.05. Okay, so if we can get into the rejection region, we'll reject the null hypothesis. If we can't, we, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so Bear with me, it might get a little bit messy, um, but let's go ahead and do it. So this is the null hypothesis of where the true mean is, but let's say that we're some omniscient being, we actually know what the true mean is, and we find, I wanna erase this alpha real quick, just remember that it's 0.05. Okay, so we're some omniscient being, and we know that the true hypothesis, that the true mean is actually right here. That this is actually where mu is. All right, so this is the hypothesized value. This is the true value. A lot of times we don't know what this is. That's why I had to say like I'm some omniscient being. Okay, so let's say that I come in and my value that I get from my sample X bar is right here. It's not within my rejection region. My p-value here would be something like, we'll say p-val would then be equal to like 0 0.1. Or if the null hypothesis is true, we'd see this result like 10% of the time. That's not enough evidence for us to reject if our alpha, if we set our alpha originally at 0.05. Okay, but the true value is over here. So beta, is this shaded region. Let's see if I can't maybe get another color in here. Okay, so give me a second. 
So that guy right there, that is alpha. This here, that is beta. Or, okay, so we know that the null hypothesis is wrong. The true one is over here. But when we do our testing, we really don't know this true distribution. We only know this hypothesized distribution. And the sample that we got was not big enough to show that, hey, there is a difference in the means. But if we compare it back to the true distribution, we would actually say, hey, this, we want to see that, hey, the true distribution is actually over here. So alpha, this kind of pinky area, I don't know if you can see the color, but this region is the probability that we uh, reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. Beta right here is what is the probability that we fail to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually false. And so we can do some things to help decrease our beta. So let's say that we keep this exact same distance between these two. So the means, um, so the hypothesized mean and the true mean, they are actually still this far apart. But let's say that we really increase our sample size. So right below, I'm going to draw just another distribution. Okay, and I'm, we're going to hold these same values for mu, uh, for the hypothesized mean and the true mean. Okay, so what we can do is if we really increase the sample size, remember when you increase the sample size, the sample distribution gets narrower, right? So we could see something that looks more like this and then looks more like this. And here we would say, you know, alpha is still going to be something like, like this guy, but beta is tiny. Beta is something way over here, very, very, very small. So this would be alpha, and this would be beta. So kind of all in all, what do we want to be able to say? We want to say that we want both alpha, the probability that we make a type 1 error, and beta, the probability that we make a type 2 error. We want both of those to be small. And if we can get them really small, like we're, we have good, we're going to do a good test. If beta is small, it said that we have power. Power, let me write that down real quick. So power is equal to one minus beta. So beta is the probability that we make a type two error. Power is one minus beta. If we can get beta up, or if we can get power to be really big, that's a good thing. We want to have a lot of power in our tests. But, uh, but specifically right now, I just want us to know like what is a type 1 error? What is a type 2 error? We know that if we want a smaller type 1 error, we just set our alpha smaller. And if we want a smaller beta, we need to just increase our sample size. Now, there's more complexity than just that, but for right now, that's where I want us to be at. Good luck.